Hi, my name's Andrew Panton. I'm Artistic Director of Dundee Rep Theatre. I'm speaking to you from the stage here at the Rep, where like many other theatres, we've been closed to the public since March this year and unable to tour our work nationally or internationally. But although we've been unable to welcome you back into our theatre, we've managed to stay connected with our communities, audiences and participants as we continue to look for new ways to bring our work to you. Our Shine On season embodies exactly that idea. And the documentary you're about to see has been filmed over the last few months and it follows our ensembles of dancers and actors and staff from all across the organisation, along with our wider connection with the sector and of course, our fantastic freelance colleagues. We hope it will provide an insight into how arts organisations have faced the challenges of this year as we continue to look for new ways to collaborate, create and innovate. From everyone here at Dundee Rep and Scottish Dance Theatre, we'd like to wish you a healthy and happy 2021. Dundee Rep and Scottish Dance Theatre sit at the cultural heart of Scotland and the city of Dundee. The effects of the global pandemic in early 2020 hit the creative live arts world hard. Theatre schedules were wiped out, rehearsals ceased, and like all theatres across the UK, Dundee Rep's auditorium went dark. It suddenly went from something we had to just be thinking about and be mindful of and make some adjustments to something that, well, it closed the theatre in like 24 hours. The theatre world was thrown upside down and we found ourselves dismantling our whole programme. The pandemic has been a big challenge. The instinct is to just continue to produce, to put content out there. But actually, we took a moment to reflect and to think carefully about what our role is in these times. Innovative thinking and creative juices can't be turned off like a tap. With the Christmas season looming, it was time to think well and truly out of the box. There's absolutely no way that we can welcome audiences into the theatre. We just can't. So the next best thing is that we take the shows to our audiences. And light is finally at the end of the tunnel. Light and hope in the form of Dundee Rep's new and innovative four-part Christmas offering, Shine On. The venue remains closed to the public, but with Christmas around the corner, the show must go on. Both resident ensembles have joined forces to deliver a blended programme of work over the festive period. Christmas has obviously provided a very specific challenge because usually we would have a Christmas show and we would have things that we're really used to and that our audiences are really used to. But restrictions mean that safety is obviously the most important thing, so we've just had to think in a new way, think outside the box about what our alternative Christmas offer can be. Suddenly, I appeared. My big red nose We had the idea of doing an outside promenade piece. We got really quite far on with the creative journey. It felt like we were almost, almost beginning to get back to normal. We'd contracted everybody, creatives, actors, technical teams. A red nose. And then the public health guidelines changed for all the right reasons, of course. The realisation started creeping in that due to government guidelines it just wasn't going to be possible. After that session we had about two weeks to reassess what we could do and come up with our new artistic programme which is Shine On. Take one. It definitely feels like the programme we're doing this Christmas is a programme for this moment in time and really sort of celebrating what we're about as an organisation and the, the community that we're part of. Thank you, Dundee! <laughs> <laughs> Check that. It works. I've got the <laughs> it was a very serious moment in rehearsals that created that. Once again, Dundee Rep and Scottish Dance Theatre can tell stories and connect with their loyal audiences here in Dundee and beyond. Proud of its Scottish roots, the Dundee Rep Ensemble was established in 1999 with the mission of bringing together a permanent full-time company of actors, the only company of its kind in Scotland. Irene McDougall is one of the original ensemble members. Good morning. All right, thank you. I'll just look up. 
I've been doing this commute for 21 years. It's a long time. It's a long time. Um, sometimes walking, most of the time driving, I have to say, because it's just that wee bit too long. To have the same commute day after day after day is extraordinary. And to be honest, I mean, I really like it. I don't think everyone else would, because some people like that sort of peripatetic thing, but I don't mind it. Um, this is the laundrette. Morning. Morning. How are you? OK. John not around? Yes, would you like a... Yeah. Yes. It'd be nice to say a quick hello. Okay. I have a very small um, kitchen and a very small bathroom, so I haven't got room for, um, for a washing machine. And this is literally around the corner, so why not? So 21 years I've been using this laundrette. And this is John. Hi, John. <laughs> Just wanted to say hello. How are you doing? Yeah, fine, good. Yeah. My mum, before she died, used to come here. And you guys used to make her laugh so much. She used to love it, so... Good yeah. Good yeah. Good yeah. yeah, you do. You get, you get a cup of tea and a biscuit and everything. <laughs> Thanks very much, John. Well, right. And I'll see you soon. Yep, yeah, OK, good. all Bye. the best. See you later. Bye. In contrast to Irene's long tenure, Glenda and Joao are relatively new members of Scottish Dance Theatre, moving to Dundee in unprecedented times. I'm Glenda, I'm from Italy. I did two months with the company before stopping for lockdown. My name is Joao, I'm from Brazil, and I joined the company in March, one day before lockdown. Yeah, we are performers, so stopping for six months and more is really challenging. Mentally, of course, but uh, especially physically. It's been also like a lot of alone moments. So like the capacity of going back and be able to relate to other people, not just through words, but through movement. It, it's been really, really challenging. We as dancers miss like the stage and performing so much. We miss the theatre, we miss getting ready for the performance, the rehearsal, everything. Every single moment, like the bow at the end, everything. But then at the same time, I thought, there's a lot of people out there that miss going to the theatre and watch dance. Artists in general sometimes are treated as non-essential. And it's quite the opposite, actually. I think arts, music, dance, it's something that is in people's lives and it's something that we, we need and also a way to, to navigate life and to make sense out of things. And I think that's what we're here to show, that what we do really does matter and it matters to a lot of people. We are not really allowed to use our theatre and in general touring in other theatres but we can still have this tool, which is like important tool of social media and digital work in general. We just want to say like, we're still here. We're still, we still want to perform for you. Combined with a full-time ensemble of dancers, this cultural nerve center always looks outwards, producing dance and theater of national and international significance. The model is unique, making Dundee Rep and Scottish Dance Theater one of a kind. Scottish Dance Theatre started as a community project, as an opportunity for dancers in Scotland to work in a full-time environment, but also as an opportunity to reach out to communities in Dundee. So engaging with communities has been really at the forefront and at the centre of everything we've done since the start of the pandemic. Marking the run-up to Christmas, both companies have been presenting an advent calendar with a difference. 24 original vignettes filmed and shared on social media each day of December. Advent is a way for the companies, both the ensemble, the acting company and the dancers, to create. We are making 24 miniatures of performance for camera, 12 by our dance ensemble and 12 by the acting ensemble. There's a broad range of offerings. Some are bedtime stories, maybe more for the uh, family audience. Some are more uh, playful. Uh, some are more perhaps beautiful and poetic, reminding us of uh, the sense of uh, light and beauty that there is still is in the world. And we want to really share that at this time. So, Freelance choreographer Theo Klinkard first came to Dundee in 2011. And this autumn, he's back, working with Scottish Dance Theatre. 
They've invited me to make a couple of group dances, so whilst the dancers are making solos on each other, there's a couple of sections which I'll be doing, which includes everyone, all of the dancers at least. The reach of Scottish Dance Theatre is international, so you know, I guess there'll be people tuning in from all over through Instagram, through Facebook, and that's really exciting to have that kind of breadth of audience. So whilst we might not be doing live work, in a weird way you get to be everywhere <laughs> rather than in one location by being online, so I try to see that as a real plus. If we can help by connecting, by uplifting, by inspiring and, and bringing people out of their everyday kind of mindset, then that's what we're doing, that's what we're aiming to do. In Scotland, it's rare for professional dancers or actors to be part of a full-time working ensemble. A relief from the usual round of constant castings and an added attraction of working across a wide range of material. To be part of an ensemble as an actor, it does mean that you are in employment all the time, and I am never, ever going to knock that, and particularly at the moment. Right. Hi, so that's the commute. That is the commute. When we're rehearsing and playing, it can be a really long day. So, um, yeah, you'll be starting at 10 o'clock in the morning, and we will uh, probably finish around about 5. We'll have a break, tea break, and then we'll go and get ready and do the show. And depending on the show, I mean, some shows are short, and they come down around about 9, and some shows will come down around about 11. So, I know, it's extraordinary. You get tired. Uh, that's quite tiring. Lockdown has been extraordinary. After 21 years of sort of constant work, it was like having a little sabbatical and I did quite enjoy that. Sort of slightly little quiet entrance. I suppose it's become a little bit normal now because we've been doing it for a couple of months. And I notice sometimes when you're in rehearsal, if people get too close, you suddenly, you take that step backwards. Um, and it's taken us a little while to sort all that out, but we're used to it now, but it will be awfully nice when we get back to normal. There we go. I know, it's a good room, isn't it? There. Right. Irene takes her place alongside five other actors in the ensemble. Altogether, four core cast and two new graduates. After time apart, the actors are delighted to be rehearsing together again. I was on a total high because I thought how, how amazing to be able to come back in and be creative again and be with these people again. It just felt the best thing in the world, I have to say. I mean, it was weird because obviously, you know, we're all having to be socially distanced and we've all got our masks on. Once you kind of got used to that, yeah, I, I just felt so lucky. Good morning, all, how are we? Fine. Oh, amazing. Give us a bit of a space. This morning, the ensemble are rehearsing a special piece of doorstep theatre for 102-year-old Dundee resident George McPherson. He's been through, you know, the end of the Great War and he's been through a couple of other pandemics along the way, I think, so I don't think this is his first rodeo. So I think it's uh, amazing to see what we can bring and just something really special to him this year. And this special performance is part of the theatre's present strand. George was nominated by his neighbours for being a kind, generous, true gent, and the ensemble are preparing a potted version of one of his favourite Christmas shows. Wander around on the octave jump, you're going to socially distance meet someone, bring joy to their life, and up. So we're preparing a 15-minute piece telling the whole story of Christmas Carol, but in a way that we can take um, to George in his cul-de-sac and perform without any rehearsal on site because it's a surprise. So if we rehearse it, then the surprise is gone. So it's a lot of fun for us as well to make it really flexible and it can really go anywhere. Because it's a surprise, it's not like we can go and set up and go, I'm, I'm going to put that there and I know it'll be there. We're just going to have to, in the moment, go, right, there's a bit of a wall. I'll shove that there and hopefully it'll still be there. <laughs> for our staff, for our actors, our dancers, it's also been a pretty horrible year, making these personal performances for these really deserving people already has brought so much joy to us in the making process and we just can't wait to deliver these performances later in the week. Don't you know your own part, Jacob Mark? Oh, Mark! My is dead. What a 
think I'm hunting these chains for? A bet! Yeah, of course. A spirit is a better word, I think. Oh, well. The doors of the theatre may be closed to the public, but this year, the venue itself will become the star of the show, transforming into a wonderful work of sound and visual art. This time of year is usually a mad rush for set builder Lenny. I don't think people realise how much they miss live theatre until it's not there. I've been doing theatre for over 20 years. Having seven months of doing nothing has been quite tough. Um, I like to create, I like to make. None of that's happened. I've been making children's toys for my grandchildren, so that's fine. <laughs> I mean, but that doesn't occupy me all the time. About 500 in yeah. from each side. Yeah. Yeah. I know, I'll come back. Okay. When you're so used to being so busy and we do so many productions a year and not having any of that, it is, it is difficult. It's nice to be back, but it's still not at the scale we'd like. It'd be lovely to get an audience in and see a main stage show. The aim of the Windows project is to show the theatre's vibrancy and bring a much-needed dose of festive cheer to all passers-by. The Windows project is just trying to bring a bit of life and a bit of interest to the front window. So lighting, a little bit of video, a little bit of projection, trying to create different scenes that tie in with productions we've done in the past. A lot of the time, we take a production down and never see it again, so it's quite nice to bring things back. And hopefully these are shows that we've kept, which may come back to main stage once we let an audience back in again. Once again, the design team are in full swing, getting the festive window displays ready for the big reveal. I'm painting something Karen the designer was just through. So it was like, is it, are these colours right? And it's like, yes, more of that, less of that. And you just miss that when you've not been able to come into, you know, into a theatre or into a studio or, or whatever it might be. You know, we're used to lifting big things around all the time and moving stuff and painting vast things to the stage. And all of a sudden, you know, you're just painting a, you know, a little table in, the, in your house. And you, so sort of physically and mentally, that's kind of drifted away a wee bit, but, um, which is what makes it more fun to come back to it. <laughs> Back on the main stage, instead of being in full-on rehearsal mode for the Dundee Rep's popular Christmas show, in stark contrast, the actors continue filming the various vignettes for the Advent project. Normally, at this time, you'd be making one, you know, pretty ambitious, um, large show. And we'd be in pre-production for a few months before, and then we'd be in rehearsal for four weeks and stuff like that. We literally made these. Um, last week. This, these are all ideas that came from the actors and then we just spent a bit of time workshopping and developing them and then instant tech rehearsal and shoot it. I mean, it's a completely different way of working and it's really refreshing and we're just having so much fun. Some of these 12 vignettes that the actors have created are um, pieces of poetry or pieces of prose and then some of them are less um, conventional uh, and then some of them we just want those iconic moments a minute of that make you feel really Christmassy. It's going to snow on stage and stuff, which is always fun at Christmas time, I think. It's one of the things that I remember when I was little. I always wanted it to snow on stage. No, I just... That's you. So are you. One of the important things is we want to embrace the fact that we're in the theatre, and the theatre has no one sitting in it. And I think that's really important. So along with the fun and the joy, we just want the backdrop to always to be what we really want and what we can't wait to happen again is this theatre to be full of people, you know, real life breathing people. Um, but right now, this is the next best thing, so, so yeah. Last chance to bring joy to people of Dundee this Christmas and beyond. <laughs> Slowly, take one. Action. Ding-a-ling-a-ling-a-ding-dong-ding. 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 
Well done, everybody. Brilliant. Thank you so much for all your work making this happen. That's 12 in two days. And a massive thank you to our production team. Absolutely. And, uh, and, and to Genevieve for making all the magic happen. Re really brilliant job. Thank you so much, Jenny. Under the guidance of award-winning designer Karen Tennant and renowned lighting designer Emma Jones, the team are putting the finishing touches to the Windows project. Windows is showing that the theatre is still alive and still breathing and it's full of stories desperate to get out and because you can't get in and see them at the moment, we've brought them to the Windows. During hard and testing years, the Second World War. So I've started so many projects that never got finished and this is giving me an opportunity to actually complete a thing and, and to have people to come and see it live. It's the nearest I can get at the moment to do my job. Basically, we're trying to make a big statement uh, so that we can attract people as they're passing by and hopefully they'll come and see what's going on. Yeah, of course. So I don't need this theatre is unbelievably important to the city of Dundee. We are still here, we are still trying to do stuff. Hopefully soon we'll be able to be back up and running. For the masses, we've just struggled. Why? Some members of the Dundee Rep Ensemble are making a short film for the Scotsman Sessions in the shadow of the iconic Tay Bridge. We're actually filming excerpts from Peter Arnott's play Tay Bridge, which Dundee Rep did last year. It's a guy called, apart from that, it's been fantastic. Yeah, there's been a few challenges this morning. Trains obviously going over the rail bridge, as you might expect. But what we didn't know was Tuesday is actually the day that all the aircraft lessons, uh, the flying lessons happen over at Dundee Airport. So every 10 minutes or so, there's a kind of light aircraft that flies overhead. That combined with the fact that the tide's now on its way in and we are not quite where we should be in terms of getting the shots that we want. So uh, it's, uh, it's, it's a lot of fun. But no challenge is insurmountable. The Dundee Rep monologues from Taybridge successfully take their rightful place alongside the hundreds of other filmed performances by Scottish artists during the coronavirus pandemic. The cast make their way across the city for their first present performance. Props, costumes and instruments are put in place for much-deserved recipient 102-year-old George McPherson. This is spontaneous doorstep theatre at its best. None of us have been unaffected by this period, but we know that some demographics have been affected a lot more. And it's our job as a regional theatre and dance company to make sure that we are really keeping connected to those communities. Good. Bring the reaction down, Annie, for all that last bit. Hold it there. Perfect. Last Unaware point. that the Dundee Rep Ensemble cast are doing last-minute rehearsals just outside his house, George is about to be very pleasantly surprised. Even though we've done a lot of digital content, it's all been really exciting and important, but we do feel that it is important at Christmas for us to have a connection with the people in our community, with our audience. Dear George, we are Dundee Rep Ensemble, and we are here to perform a piece of theatre especially for you. You were nominated to receive this present by Sarah on behalf of all of your neighbours at Arn Hall Garden. Always dapper and always ready with a wave and a smile. They want you to know how deeply they all care for you and the high regard in which you are held.
for allowing us to do it, George. Yes. Yes. Thank, Thank you. you very much. <laughs> Good, we're glad you enjoyed yourself. Yeah, that was, that's wonderful, this wonderful show. Well, <laughs> thank you, George. Thank you very much, thank George. George. Yeah. Yeah. See you later. Bye. We've had the best time making this for you, George, so thank you for giving us that opportunity. Oh, we'll pack up and everything. If people can't come to the theatre, the theatre comes to them. And thanks to the Shine On season, George got his bespoke performance of A Christmas Carol. Dundee Ripping Scottish Dance Theatre have a massive role to play and a really key role to play in terms of telling the stories of healing. I think that we can help our communities and our audiences and our participants to ride the storm, come out the other side different, probably changed, but with a resilience for the future. Creative institutions such as Dundee Rep and Scottish Dance Theatre are an integral part of Scottish society. But how can they stay that way and thrive in a socially distanced post-COVID future? We've had help in different forms from Scottish Government through Creative Scotland, but that help only gets us probably just into the new year. And then the real next, you know, let's call it a glitch in the road, and I'm probably understating it, because we're not going to be inviting audiences back in in the same numbers to pay the same prices for tickets and have revenue in that way. We just know that's not going to happen. So we've got to continue to reinvent, innovate, find ways, but we are going to need other forms of help as well along the way. What 2020 has shown us is that without dance and theatre, life can be dark. We're now rethinking the place live performance art has in this new COVID age. However, there's still one final piece of the jigsaw missing, a live audience. I think we all can't wait to get some shows back on that stage and back on tour. We'd love to see an audience back in the theatre by September, October time. And we'd also love to see um, Scottish Dance Theatre out on the roads being able to tour again. The dance sector has found a really strong sense of solidarity and resilience through this period and we found a real sense of refreshed purpose, I would say, in our work. There's something very visceral about live theatre. You get that excitement being at a live show with live actors. Nothing better. The Shine On season is by no means a full return to what Dundee Rep and Scottish Dance Theatre audiences will know and love but it is a significant step towards coming together to tell stories and connect with audiences after what has been a hard year. One day, this strange time will become a story which Scotland's playwrights and theatre makers will tell, perhaps in Dundee Rep's auditorium. And when they do, this theatre will once again fill with the sounds of laughter, tears and applause.